Okay, now just to continue with what we were speaking on, and this is uh, Osar, Osiris, the uh, original, uh, we call it the original uh, deadbeat uh, baby father, black baby father. This is Osar, the Osar lecture, the deadbeat baby father, or black baby father. Now, we have to understand the ancient uh, mythos in order to really comprehend what is going on today. So now in the continuing, we were saying concerning um, Orset or Isis, that just as it was in Christianity with the Madonna, and, and here's, a, here's an example right here, that the original, when we go to the original of the mythos here, and let's open this up, to the original of the mythos, we find that here we have the original um, black Madonna or or Set or Isis, and in the early Christianity we can see this um, this uh, this mythos being continued here. Now, as we begin to look a little more um, deeply and circumspectly. The first thing that we will um, observe is the whitewashing of that image when now foreign elements now began to co-opt this particular image. And let's open this up right here. We have the Ashtarot or the, Ash, the Ashtaret, which is also another important. This is now the whitewash image that they sought to superimpose over the more original indigenous image or the original image of the historic person and this has happened also with our black lord and savior uh jesus christ now this is also another image right here another presentation image that can be used to um demonstrate this a little bit more more fully now All right, just to, just so we can uh, take out some of the distractions, the background image, the background um, noises here. All right, now this is just to demonstrate our basic point when we speak about the original Orset, you know, the original Orset and the original um, Black Madonna or Kedistin Gudamarium, and then we have the counterfeit, which was superimposed but yet in the same mythological or symbological um, presentation. Now, as we mentioned already, and we'll just mention here again, this particular book here, known as the, the Isis Papers, or the Keys to the Colors, by Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, is a very important document to understand the role of uh, white supremacy or racism as well as the whitewashing but the symbols the symbology and the interpretation of the symbology is also a key and very important and this is by our Martin Orset um, and this is Dr. Francis Cress Welsing's um, uh, very important and foundational work, once again, the Isis Papers, the Isis Papers, or the Keys to the Colors. And one needs to really get a copy of this because it's a very, it's a very fundamental, very important work. Now, that's, that's a, a foundation here, and that's just continuing with what we were saying previously. But now, in returning this to the original... Um, theme or subject matter that we are seeking to expose at present concerning the mythology of the deadbeat baby father or the Orset and the, I the Isis and the Osiris 
in the Isis and Osiris uh, mythos, and here we have the Lord of the the Lord of the Perfect Black, and there's other um, representations. This is a modern digital representation right here, um, compared with the statue of Osiris, and you can understand and recognize the the features, the lips, the nose. That shows his clear African, Ethiopian, black ethnicity. So this is the original. Now, if we will study the images as the images have been more often, this is like a more modern representation here. And then there is this other image too, which proves the Lord of the Perfect Black as well let's bring this bring this more to size right here the lord of the perfect black as well right here now and just getting through this this basic foundational right here and we're going to uh take a sample from this particular document right here now the legend of osiris or osar what is the legend of osiris or osar as it provides the background for the whole mythology of the deadbeat baby father or the deadbeat black male. And the legend of Osiris or Osar is one of the most ancient myths. Now, we need to understand the word myth or mythos as well. Before the 1700s, 1800s, the word myth meant parables or symbolic stories and not as it means today, which is commonly um, connotated to mean fiction. The word myth and the meaning of myth has changed from ancient time to modern time. And that change occurred roughly in the 1700s and the 1800s with uh, white supremacy, i.e. Um, racism. Now, understanding this, we can continue that the legend of Osar is one of the most ancient myths in uh, Egypt, and it was central to the ancient Egyptian state religion or the spirituality of that particular time, which became the official state religion. The myth establishes Osar or Osiris's position as the god of the dead and the Lord of the underworld. So here's the, the foundation for the idea of the dead beat or dead within the mythology. Now, Horus and all of Herui and all of the Feron or Peron or the Sutenbat, um, the Sutbat or the Sut, or the Pharaohs, their right to kingship. It also demonstrates the powers and the duties of the other major um, Bani Elohim or the sons of God who were called the Neteru or the Neteru or the Sarais, the Sarais or the Sarais, the sons of Ray. And we explained Ray in connection with Roi, the Ethiopic and the vision. So it also demonstrates this particular mythos this particular parable, symbolic story, it demonstrates the powers and the duties of the other major um, gods, or Bani Elohim, as well as the setting up of the great adversary, Set or Sut. And just to remind you of who this uh, great adversary is, just to bring up um, his... Um, iconography and we had this iconography back here let's just bring him up again so that you can have a visual representation it's always important to have a vis visual representation and this is what the ancient Egyptians did when they taught at this basic basic level we compare it in a sense to um, cartoons though cartoons may seem to be in a childlike fashion. There's a very there's a very deep and important 
meaning behind it. If you even look at the Western cartoons, they may seem kiddish, but there's a there's a deep message in a lot of the cartoons. When we examine a lot of the racist cartoons, though they seem innocent on the surface, it is teaching at a basic childhood and and the first the, the first lessons in life. So don't be deceived by the simplicity of the form. So now this sets up the adversary suit or, or seti. Yet oddly enough, we have yet to find a complete version of the of the story. There's not a complete version of the story. Um, what we have and what most have that study the Egyptology or the ancient Egyptian um, Kometian mythos is often cobbled together or brought together over many years and different and different ages, different dynasties from many different documents and sources, namely um, crypt and tomb robbing, what was written on, we could say, the coffins and the caskets and what was deposited with the bodies and the remains of, of the ancients. Now, what we're going to present here is our own attempt at reconstructing one of the oldest stories or, or mythologies in the entire world. And as we go further, hopefully in other lectures and other writers have also reported this and has, have brought this together, namely Gerald Macy has done an excellent work in his volumes um, to really show that the, this ancient mythos, this ancient template out of Egypt we can find this through many, many different cultures, especially in, in, in Africa and in Asia. Oh, my brothers, Wendemoch and my sisters, the Hittoch, gather around I and I. And I and I may tell the tale of before time, of the golden age when the Elohim or the gods, the Netaru, walked upon the earth with us, with I and I. Osar, or Osiris, the great grandson of Re, sat upon the throne of the Netaru, or the Elohim, the gods, ruling over the living world as Re, or Roi, the vision, did over the Elohim. He was the first of the pharaohs, or the pharaon, pharaon, the peron, the great house, and his queen, his sister wife, or set, she was the first queen. And may we note here that their origination was from the Tob, or the Kui land, or what we call the Ethiopia, or Tobia. They ruled for many ages together in love and in peace and in harmony. They were the civilizers of that civilization coming from the headwaters of the Nile in Ethiopia. His ways were just and upright or fit or puta. He made sure that ma'at remained in balance that the law was kept. So Ma'at smiled upon the world. All peoples praised Osar and Oset, Osiris and Isis, and peace, Hotep, Hetepu, reigned over all. For this was what was known to the ancients as the Golden Age. However, there was trouble and tribulation, proud suit, proud seti. The brother of Osar, of, I, of Osiris, he coveted the throne of Osar or Osiris. He also coveted Oset. Now, this is important when we begin to understand that Isis, Hissus, and we'll go through the etymology, Joe Macy has, has an excellent comparative analysis of this name, especially in um, his volumes such as Book of the Beginnings, which we have published, and you can get a copy of that as well, Volume 1 and Volume 2, Natural Genesis, and particularly in his magnum opus, his great work, 
which is known as ancient Egypt light of the world. So when it says that suit, who is pictured over here in profile, that suit or set or shet, he coveted the throne of the Lord of the Perfect Black, Osar, Osiris. He also coveted Oset or Isis, and her name signifies and refers to the throne. So it's interesting to see how how these two ideas, the throne and the sister wife, is basically one and the same when we get to the root and the truth in the etymology of the name. Sut, he coveted the power over the living world, and he desired to take it from his brother. Uh, a similar situation that we find in the Kayan and the Abel story within um, Moses' first book. In his dark mind, his unilluminated, not enlightened mind, he conceived of a plot to kill his brother, to kill Osar, and to take all, everything from him. And now this gives us a perfect background to white supremacy or modern racism and the rule of the Gentiles or the whole scenario between um, black and white or white versus black or the Europeans versus the African or the North versus the South. Now, suit the Typhonian or the, the Zaphonian he built a box, a satin, a satin, Bamarinya, a satin. Now, this also now links us with a suit on and Satan, the Hebrew Shetan. And he inscribed it with wicked magic, or more correctly, with sorcery that would chain anyone who entered it from escaping. Suit took the satin or the box to the great feast of the Elohim, to the great feast of the gods. He waited until Osar had made himself drunk on much beer. Then he challenged Osar, his brother, to a contest of strength. Each one in turn would enter the sat in the box and attempt through sheer strength to break it open. Osar, he was sure in his power, yet at this time, because of his drunkenness, he was feeble in mind because of the drink, the intoxication, and he entered the satin. Suit quickly poured molten lead into the box. Osar, he desperately tried to escape, but the wicked sorcery held him bound. And he died. Suit then picked up the sat in the box or the coffin, and he hurled it into the hopper, into the gion or the Nile, where it floated away. Only Orset was unafraid of Suit. She searched all of the Hopi, all of the Guillaume for the box, for the now containing her beloved husband, brother. Finally, she found it, large in a tamarisk bush that had turned into a mighty tree. For the power of Osar still was in him, though he lay dead. She carried the box back to the Kemet, to the Black Land, or to Egypt, and placed it in the house of the Elohim. She changed herself into a, a bird and flew about his body singing a song of mourning, or what's known as an elegy, or a lamentation. Then she perched upon him, and it is said that she used a form of magic, and she cast a, a spell, and the spirit of the dead Osar entered her, and she conceived and be a son whose destiny it would be to avenge his 
father, his dead, beat, or beaten dead father. She called the child Cherui in the Ethiopic, which is Horus, or the elect, the chosen, and hid him on an island far away from the gaze of his uncle. Not Uncle Sam, but Uncle Sut, Uncle Seth. She then went to Tahuti to thought, wise Tahuti, who knows all secrets and implored his help. She asked him for magic that could bring Osar back to life. Tahuti thought, Lord of magic, or Lord of the knowledge, who brought himself into being by speaking his own name, searched through all of his magic. He knew that Osar's spirit had departed his body and was lost. To restore Osar, Tahuti had to remake him so that his spirit would recognize him and rejoin. Tahuti and Oset together created the ritual, what's known as the ritual of life. Some say this was the original book of life. That which allows us, I and I, to live forever when we die or when the first death, not to fall and die the second death, which is annihilation. And this is similar to what Revelation also puts forward within its parabolic pages. But before Tehudi could work the particular magic or the spells, the, the, the good magic, cruel suit set discovered them. He stole the body of Osar and tore it into many pieces. Some say 72 pieces and scattered them throughout Gibbet, throughout Egypt. He was sure that Osar would never be reborn. And so it is that Cherui or Horus or the elect that watches over I and I while I and I live and gives guidance to the Peron or the Feron, the Sutanbat or Nesut, while he lives, and his father, Osar, watches over I and I in the next life. So it is that the Elohim, the Netaru, or the gods, are at Hetepu, or at Shalom, Salam, or at peace. So it is that Sut, that wicked Uncle Sut, eternally strives for vengeance, or revenge, rather. Battling, battling with Harui, the elect, the chosen, the BC, an original template for what we call the Moshi, the Moshiach, or the Christos, the Christ, at every single turn. When Harui, Horus, wins, Ma'at, truth and justice is upheld and the world is at peace. Hatapu. When Sut wins, the world is in turmoil. The world is at war. The world suffers tribu uh, tribulation and trauma, just as it does today because of the reign of the children of Shet which are the white supremacists and this white supremacist Gentile world system. But we know that the dark or the unilluminated times do not and cannot last forever. And the bright rays of Harui, the sun of righteousness, will shine over I and I again. In the last days, Cherui, Horus, and Sut will fight one last time for the world or for the rightful rulership. Cherui, Horus, will defeat 
suit for Ivor, and Osar will be able to return to this world. Now, now this particular part of the mythos, when properly understood, has been fulfilled within our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshi. And thus the father, the Osar, has been able to return to the world in the person of the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, Nugusa Neges, Lechop, Yasiyume, Egezi, Ab, Beher. On that day, which is called the Day of Awakening, all the tombs of those who are dead. And the key thing about this mythos is speaking more spiritually, but it's using the types and the symbols that we in the so-called material world or land of the living know that all of the tombs shall open and the just dead, the Sadiqan amongst the dead, the Mutan, shall live again as we do, and all sorrow shall pass away. Now, when we study this in context with uh, Christianity, we can see that this has truly come to pass, but there is more. So, my brothers and sisters, stay tuned. Shalom. Ras Teferi.